Hello friends, welcome to Science Talk. I am your host and resident oceanographer, Jim Massa. So I want to share with you this abstract uh, that appeared recently for papers soon to be published. And uh, published in Geophysical Research Letters, and uh, which is part of AGU. Increasing multi-year sea ice loss in the Beaufort Sea. A new export pathway for the diminishing multi-year ice cover of the Arctic Ocean. And the lead author is David G. Babb. And we have a bunch of his colleagues, uh, Ryan uh, Gailey, Stephen Howell, Jack Landy, Julian, I guess, Strove, Strevy and David uh, Barber. Historically, multi-year sea ice, MYI, covered a majority of the Arctic and circulated through the Beaufort Gyre for years. However, increased ice melt in the Beaufort Sea during the early 2000s was proposed to have severed this circulation. Constructing a regional multi-year ice budget from 1997 to 2021 reveals that multi-year ice import from the Beaufort Sea has increased year-round. Yet, less multi-year ice now survives through summer and is transported onwards in the gyra. Annual average multi-year ice loss quadrupled over the study period, an increase from about 7% to about 33% of annual Fram Strait multi-year ice export. While the peak in 2018, approximately 385,000 uh, 385, square kilometers was similar in magnitude for Fram Strait multi-year ice export, the ice albedo feedback coupled with the transition toward younger, thinner, multi-year ice is responsible for the increased multi-year ice loss. Multi-year ice transport through the Beaufort Gyra has not been severed, but has been reduced so severely to prevent it from being redistributed throughout the Arctic Ocean. So what they're basically saying was, they proposed that the Beaufort Gyra mechanism was severed. That's what they proposed. What they're saying is this study does not support that hypothesis. That's what they're saying. What they're saying is that basically the loss of multi-year ice is responsible. Younger, right, there's a the key right there. Younger, thinner. That means ice less than two years of age. Maybe three tops. But except for a few holdout areas uh, in the, uh, the Canadian archipelago, four, five, six, seven-year sea ice is pretty much gone. So we're looking at mostly one to two years, maybe three years. So we're looking at we know the ice is disappearing now this whole business here of import into the Beaufort Sea has increased year round okay and we have the Beaufort Gyra okay the Beaufort Gyra is a anticyclonic so it is a clockwise flow now as it's flowing in the clockwise direction you have the transarctic current which is part of the result of water flowing in the Atlantic side. Now, usually, the ice that's in that gyre, as it swings to higher latitude, it can be picked up by that transarctic current and sent out the Fram Strait, part of that multi-year uh, ice in, uh, export. Why doesn't it all the time? Arctic dipole. 
because the Arctic Dipole can constrain the flow to keep the ice within the Arctic Ocean Basin or facilitate the flow out the Fram Strait. So in other words, the because the Arctic Dipole, you got high and low pressure systems there, you got wind forcing, they're going to influence what the Beaufort Gyro is doing. And by that influence, it could readily entrain the ice to go out through Fram or not. <laughs> and uh, you're probably sick of me saying this already, but uh, happily, I'm, uh, I'm, I am proud to say that uh, um, I had a hand in figuring out all this. Not this specific study, but the general idea of the Arctic Dipole, what it's doing to the sea ice, the ice flow uh, directions, and etc. So th they list the key points here. Multi-year sea ice area lost in a Beaufort Sea quadrupled from 46,000 square kilometers per year in 97 to 2001 to 183,000 square kilometers per year in 2017 to 2021. So in other words, in 20 years, the ice loss quadrupled. The peak, so this is these are average values. The peak ice loss was 385,000 square kilometers in 2018, which is close to the annual multi-year ice area export through Fram Strait. The Beaufort Sea has become a multi-year ice export pathway rivaling the Fram Strait, encouraging the Pan-Arctic transition to seasonal ice cover. Pan-Arctic transition, that's, based, that's also saying how the Arctic is transitioning, but it's also a reference to the, the, the uh, current that flows through the center of the Arctic. So now that what they're saying is that the Beaufort Sea the, and the gyre that's found there, think of it as a gear that's just kicking up. Because you think, you know, a anticyclonic uh, flow tends to have a convergence zone in the middle. So you expect the ice to convert and be constrained. And now they're saying that it's not that the, due to the various forcings, it's changing and it's helping to shove some of that ice into the currents that ultimately take it out through the fram. As opposed to just the ice in the rest of the basin being pushed out through the fram. So what's the plain language summary? Historically, sea ice grew thicker and aged into multi-year sea ice and it was transported clockwise around the Beaufort Gyre for up to and beyond 10 years. Knows you could have ice uh, older than ten years, a rarity, but it could happen. Typically, it was around seven. You know, and you know we could date it with confidence to you know seven years. This pattern facilitated the Pan-Arctic distribution of multi-year ice that was typical of the ninety of the eighties and nineties. However, warming temperatures and greater sea ice melt in the Beaufort Sea since the early two thousands have significantly increased the annual area of multi-year ice loss to melt and was proposed to have severed multi-year ice transport through the Beaufort Gyra. Here we use a regional multi-year ice uh, budget to show that an increasing area of multi-year ice is lost annually in the Beaufort Sea and this has considerably altered and interrupted that transport through the Gyra for prolonged periods during recent years. This change has Implications regionally for wildlife, shipping, local communities. Okay. To kind of sum up what they're saying there. The Beaufort Gyra basically helped to keep the ice in place there, constrain it, which allowed it to grow thicker. So that you would have, you know, considerably older multi-year ice. You know, four, five, six, seven years, and in some cases, up to over 10 years. That's all changing. Now, because of the 
warming waters from the Pacific, melting the ice from below. We're losing the multi-year ice. So it's getting younger and younger. So that we now typically have one, two, maybe three-year-old ice. Well, that's not as thick. That's easier to move. If it's easier to move, it can get caught up in that Transarctica current and then find its way out to the North Atlantic via the Fram Strait. So what they're proposing, we know about ice being moved out through the Fram Strait. They're now proposing that the Beaufort Gyre is helping to take a lot of that ice that would have formed in and that's a, you know, the Beaufort Gyre is a, is a substantial, uh, uh, covers a substantial area of the Arctic Ocean. And so now they're saying, oh, that is helping to transport ice of ultimately out through the Fram Strait into the North Atlantic, where it then melts and is loss. And of course, with the continual uh, warming waters coming in through, uh, you know, in this case here, specifically through the Pacific side, it's going to delay the formation of ice in the year. It's going to melt it early in the year. It's going to, so you can have a bigger uh, season, a longer season of no ice, so that when it does form, because of the atmosphere forcing, the ice gets lost. Now, I'd like to see the paper, see if they discuss the Arctic Dipole, but uh, waiting for the actual publication. So, so here you have it. Uh, basically, the Beaufort Gyre is changing, and it's helping to increase multi-year ice loss which ultimately leads to what is likely to happen, blue ocean events in the Arctic. So yet another mechanism in addition, and it, it ties in to the mechanism we're pushing the ice out through Fram, but this allows us to better understand some of the physical dynamics of what's happening there. And that allows us to better project what's going to be coming down the pipe. So I wanted to share that with you. Another mechanism to increase, facilitate loss of sea ice. Thank you for your time. Hello, folks. This is Jim here with Science Talk, asking you to please subscribe to my channel and to inform others of my channel and of the work that I do. Please share to social media platforms that you use. Also, as a reminder, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I load up more videos. Finally, I ask that you support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.